on World News Tonight. Climate Calamity Malaysian nations struggle with deadly floods, America and the rest of Europe sees record-breaking heat. The race begins. With the presidential election on the horizon, potential candidates kick off their rallies. Grave threats. Russia issues stern warnings against Ukraine following new cluster bomb supplies from the West. Bastille Day. France celebrates a revolution milestone with dazzling displays above the Eiffel Tower. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and you are watching World News this Monday night and we start off tonight with updates on the worsening climate crisis across the globe. And kicking off in India now, Delhi Minister Atishi urged people to stay in relief camps as the Yamuna water level was showing a rising trend again. Due to heavy rains in some areas of Haryana on Sunday, the water level of Yamuna rose slightly. The Central Water Commission estimates that water levels can reach 206.1 meters overnight, but there is no danger for the people of Delhi. Drone footage showed New Delhi's roads swamped by floodwaters even as the Yamuna River receded. Yamuna's water levels reached its highest in 45 years last week following unusually heavy rainfall in New Delhi and hilly northern states, forcing the evacuation of hundreds of people as the river which runs through the city breached its banks. Meanwhile, people living in relief camps are requested not to go back to their homes just yet. Delhi's minister urged a tweet to citizens to return only after the water level goes below the danger mark. Several flooded roads have been cleared and many Many offices reopened earlier today. Due to the rise in water level of the Yamuna River, the water logging situation still does persist in several parts of the national capital. Delhi has recorded rainfall 91% above normal this monsoon season that began on June 1st. It has received 12 inches of rainfall so far in July, which is the third highest for the month for at least 12 years, according to the India Meteorological Department. Moving on to the United States, a rain-soaked New England braced for more downpours, with several people dead from flooding, and the National Weather Service warned of extreme heat for nearly a quarter of the U.S. population. In Arizona, residents like Khalil Washington tried to beat the heat Sunday under the sprinklers. As the temperature in the state hit 110 degrees or above for the 17th day in a row. It's like very dry heat. If you ever like stood next to an oven while you're baking something, it's like that. The U.S. National Weather Service warned of extreme heat for nearly a quarter of the population. Laura Stewart said it's just a fact of life in this part of the country. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's always something that you have to keep in mind because, the, the, I mean, the heat can kill you pretty quickly if you're not careful about it. On the East Coast, the problem is rain. New England braced for more downpours. While in Pennsylvania, at least four people were swept away and killed in a flash flood. The Weather Service said parts of New England and the mid-Atlantic areas will get hit with storms capable of producing torrential rainfall ahead of a cold front approaching from the west. The areas under risk include major cities like New York, Boston and Philadelphia. New York Governor Kathy Hochul on Sunday urged residents in her state to avoid travel until the rain passes. And so please heed this warning. It's just for a short time. Please stay home, stay off the roads until this has passed if you're in one of these designated areas. We've already seen some intense rainfall. Suffolk County had five inches of rain already within two hours. I mean, five inches of rain over the course of a day is a lot. Over two hours, it's quite extraordinary. And just like last week, we had eight inches of rain over a short period of time in Orange County, leading to devastating effects. The Weather Service said the Northeast could experience impassable roadways, tornadoes, and even mudslides in some areas of higher terrain. Adding to the climate crisis in South Korea now, heavy downpours across the nation have devastated many parts, particularly in central regions. The authorities announced on Sunday that 33 people have died from torrential rainfall. Officials are yet to disclose how many got stuck in the 685-meter tunnel, but said there were 15 vehicles. The devastating heavy downpours in central regions that began last Thursday caused flooding and landslides, taking lives and wrecking people's homes. 
one of the worst hit areas, Yecheongun County in eastern Gyeongsangbuk-do province. At least 17 people have died in Yecheon and its surrounding cities, including Mungyeong and Yeongju, where a high-level landslide warning has been in effect. Nine people are still missing in the region. Another seriously hit area is in South Korea's central Chungcheongbuk-do province, which has seen some extreme torrential rainfall. An underground tunnel in Osong has been flooded by the overflowing river nearby, causing people inside cars to be stuck underwater. At least nine people have been found dead. The South Korean Fire Department said around 15 vehicles, including a bus, were trapped inside the tunnel. The rescue authorities added that they expect the water to be drained within Sunday. Thousands of homes across the country have also been evacuated as residents flee the rain. Around 8,000 residents in 13 cities and provinces, including Seoul, Busan and Gwangju, have fled their homes and are taking shelter. People's properties have been ruined, too. The authorities said at least 48 houses have been flooded, with more than 140 roads and public facilities damaged. Public transport is also affected due to the heavy rain. Around 10 national roads have been blocked for use, whereas five KTX tracks have been shut down. Train tracks across the nation are also affected. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol who's visiting Poland, held an emergency meeting online with the disaster control headquarters and ordered rapid recovery in the affected regions. Meanwhile, over in Europe, meteorologists say that more heat is on the way with temperatures across southern Europe expected to hit record highs. Residents and tourists try to cool off at Garda Lake in northern Italy Sunday as a heat wave stretches across much of Europe. The little relief is in sight. Meteorologists warn more heat is on the way, with temperatures expected to hit record highs in the triple digits across the south. A new weather pattern pushed into the region from northern Africa on Sunday. That could lift temperatures above 113 degrees Fahrenheit in parts of Italy. Hot weather alerts have been issued for over a dozen cities. This is not normal, says a resident from Sirmione. I don't remember such intense heat, especially at this time of year. On Friday, Greece closed the entrance to its famous Acropolis to protect tourists from the scorching sun. The heat is very intense and um, there's a lot of people. Uh, I hope hopefully no one will uh, suffer any illness, but uh, it was very intense heat. Yeah. On the Spanish island of La Palma, firefighters say the intense heat and winds are making it difficult to contain a forest fire. The blaze has forced thousands of people to evacuate. Europe's highest recorded temperature of 119.8 degrees Fahrenheit was registered in Sicily just two years ago. Meteorologists say that record could be broken in the coming days. Now to the race for the White House and major campaign shakeup. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has laid off about a dozen staffers with more changes expected, including a shift in his messaging. With, his, uh, with this comes news of surprising numbers in support for Trump's return to the White House. Tonight, the major shakeup in the campaign for the White House, six months to the crucial Iowa caucuses. Faced with the reality that he'd been quickly burning through cash, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis already cut about a dozen staffers with more changes expected. This weekend in Iowa, one supporter telling DeSantis outright he should focus more on issues that affect families, like the economy. I'd like to have you talk more about the kitchen table issues. But last night, DeSantis lobbing very personal attacks instead, mocking 80-year-old President Biden for his age. Uh, Biden, I think, has been in two states, too, today. Uh, confusion and disorientation. The president's team brushed off these sorts of attacks and instead pointed to DeSantis' own struggles with his campaign. Speaking to his own crowd in Florida, former President Trump blasted DeSantis for challenging him, suggesting any primary challenger to him was bad for the GOP. His establishment handlers are wasting such precious time and resources to divide the party. They're dividing the party. Although he's dropping so quickly, he's probably not going to be in second place much longer.
Ferocious attacks colliding with the deadline to report second quarter fundraising and spending totals. A peek behind the early campaign curtains. Trump raking in eight figures. DeSantis, too. But he is relying heavily on big dollar donors. The report's only a part of the picture. They do not include money going to PACs and super PACs. At the other end of the spectrum, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie netting just $1.6 million, a third, though, from small dollar donors. Candidates like Nikki Haley and Tim Scott in the middle of the pack, both with more cash on hand for the long haul. We're going into a short commercial break now. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. Now over to the latest developments of the Bangladesh boat tragedy. Four people were killed after a water bus uh, carrying 20 people sank in Bangladesh's Buriganga River near the capital, Dhaka. At least four people are dead and others are missing after a boat carrying over 20 passengers sank in Bangladesh's Buriganga River near the capital, Dhaka, after colliding with a sand-laden bulkhead, according to fire service officials. Most of the passengers were believed to have swum ashore as the water bus sank close to the bank. Police relay to local media that four bodies have been recovered and seven people have been rescued and sent to hospitals. Furthermore, the police ensured that rescue operations are still ongoing and hundreds of onlookers gathered at the site as rescuers and multiple boats scanned the river with flashlights in efforts to quicken the search operations. Now on an update on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, President Vladimir Putin is threatening to use cluster bombs in Ukraine. He stated that the country has a sufficient stockpile of the munitions and that they would be used if cluster munitions are deployed against Russian forces in Ukraine. President Vladimir Putin said Sunday that Russia has cluster bombs and will use them if Ukraine uses the weapons against Russian forces first. He told State TV Moscow that the Russian Federation has a, quote, sufficient stockpile of different types of cluster munitions. Putin denied using them but went on to say, if they are used against us, we reserve the right to take reciprocal action. On Thursday, Ukraine said it had received cluster bombs from the United States, its biggest military backer. The U.S. said the munitions are needed to compensate for shell shortages faced by Kyiv's forces at a time when they are mounting a counteroffensive. Cluster munitions are banned in more than 100 countries, though Russia, Ukraine and the U.S. have not signed up to the Convention on Cluster Munitions. The weapons typically release large numbers of smaller bomblets that can kill indiscriminately over a wide area. Some of them inevitably fail to explode and can pose a danger for decades, particularly to children. Ukraine has said it will use cluster bombs to dislodge concentrations of enemy soldiers when trying to take back its own territory, but will not use them on Russian territory. Putin said he regarded the use of cluster bombs as a crime. Human Rights Watch says both countries have used cluster munitions. Iran has relaunched patrols by the so-called morality police as authorities escalated their efforts to enforce the country's mandatory hijab rules. Iranian morality police returned to the streets 10 months after the death of a woman in their custody sparked nationwide protests. On the streets of Tehran, a growing number of women are choosing to not wear the hijab too many, according to authorities. In a bid to curb the trend, the morality police say they are launching a new crackdown. From today, police patrols will be established throughout the country. In addition to their other duties, these police officers will deal with those who unfortunately ignore the consequences of not wearing the proper hijab and insist on not following the rules. Some young people say the clampdown is too little too late. Do you think the morality police can prevent women from not wearing a hijab? They cannot impose it like before. The number of people who do not obey is too high now. The last thing they can do is use violence and force it against us. They cannot do it. 
The new campaign comes exactly 10 months after the death of 22-year-old Masa Armini, who was arrested by the morality police for allegedly not wearing her hijab correctly. Her death sparked mass protests that swept across several cities. They were violently repressed. Hundreds of people were killed, thousands arrested and several sentenced to death. The demonstrations quickly evolved into one of the biggest challenges to the Islamic Republic since the 1979 revolution, with many calling for the overthrow of Iran's clerical rulers. The government branded the protests a foreign conspiracy without providing any evidence. Now on to some sports news. Wimbledon has a new king and it is a Spaniard. World number one Carlos Alcaraz beat reigning champion Novak Djokovic in a thrilling five-set men's final to win his first Wimbledon title. Hemman Hill was at full capacity. This was the final everybody wanted to see, including Hollywood royalty. The 23-time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic taking on the game's newest star, Carlos Alcaraz. The champion quickly stamped his authority on centre court and despite some spectacular shots from the challenger, he couldn't get a foothold in the opening set. Djokovic taking it 6-1. Alcaraz found his feet in the second set, but at 6-all, he had to stand firm against the master of the tiebreak. Djokovic was feeling the tension as Alcaraz continued to apply the pressure. The fourth game of set three lasted over 26 minutes, the crowd loving it as their new hero wrapped it up with three breaks of serve and another roar. But there's a good reason why Djokovic hasn't been beaten on this court for 10 years and he held firm to take it to a fifth, a winner-takes-all shootout. It was electric. Alcaraz with some incredible play to nose ahead. Djokovic unable to hide his frustration. Nerves inside and outside centre court were frayed, but the 20-year-old knew he was very, very close. He had to just hold his nerve to wrap up an extraordinary victory. I did it for myself, not for the 10th generation, honestly. But, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was great, uh, you know, really Novak at, at, at his best uh, in this stage, uh, you know, making history. Uh, being the guy, you know, to be him after 10 years, uh, I'm beating on, on that court is amazing for me. Uh, and something that uh, is something that I will never forget, that's for sure. The newest rivalry in tennis has resulted in one of the most thrilling finals of recent times. How many more are ahead? Welcome back to World News and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. British-born actress and singer Jane Birkin, in 1960s wild child who became a beloved figure in France, has died in Paris aged 76. Two people have died after an attack on the Crimean Bridge linking the occupied Crimean Peninsula to Russia, France, Nodar region. A blast at an eatery in China's eastern Jiangzhou province killed one and wounded another, reigniting public concerns about the safety of cooking gas tanks after a series of similar accidents that took place in China last month. Markets in Hong Kong halted trading after the the city's observatory issued a number eight storm signal for Typhoon Talim, the third highest warning under the city's weather system. Mexico authorities found and released 196 migrants stacked at a tractor trailer in the Gulf of Mexico. The people rescued were put in the national system of Integra Family Development and Custody. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight in the streets of Paris with spectacular views of fireworks deployed in celebration of Bastille Day. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.